Hello, uh, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are once again returning to Spirit Island. It's our fourth, which would, will be the fourth video in my Spirit Island playlist. Um, so excited to come back to it. So we have already done uh, a video involving the other three adversaries. So now we go to the mighty England uh, and they are a bear. Um, so let's get things set up and then we can go through exactly what makes England so difficult. So I'm going to shuffle up the field deck, the fear deck. This is shuffled. And we'll figure out how many of those cards will be there. Uh, we will randomly pick one of the healthy island cards to start the game. Four, so I'm going to pick from this set, and that's a five, there's a two. So number two, we'll go in and we will put two blight on that card. We already have our four fear in the fear pool. We have our token set up. Since we were playing against England and the France, I did take out the special slave rebellion card. of the events are shuffled. I have to shuffle up my powers. So, England is a builder adversary more than the rest. Um, it can build uh, very quickly um, and there is an additional loss condition. Additionally, there's also, which I'll get to and I'll explain that, there's also an additional um, an additional adversary action during the adversary phase uh, at certain levels. So we're going to actually trigger that today by playing with level 3. We will, on this channel at some point, get to level 4, 5, and 6. Um, I just feel like as far as going the, through the mechanics, talking strategy, at the higher level sometimes it's a very quick game. <laughs> so, uh, and not in a good way, so I, I felt it would be better. To stick with the lower level one more time before we get into the, the bottom half of one of the adversary cards. Again, I don't use scenarios solo. Um, I kind of reserve that for when I'm playing this in a co-op fashion. Just think that the the flavor and the experience of the scenarios is better with more than just one person. But that's also my personal opinion. Obviously, some people could disagree with me, and that would be amazing. A, B, C, and D. I rolled a one. Er on this dice that little Aladdin thing is a one uh, so we are gonna do board A board A we have our mountains clumped up top everything else looks pretty standard uh, nothing too crazy about this board I'm gonna move it up to give myself a play area and I'll move the major power cards over So board A, there is nothing in land one. In land two, we have a city and a Dahan. In land three, we have two Dahan. In land four, we have a Blight. In land five, there is nothing. In land six, we have a Dahan. In land seven, we have two Dahan. And in land eight, we have a town. And additionally, since we're playing with the Brants and Chlor expansion, we are going to get a disease in land two, and we are going to put a beast in the lowest numbered land that does not have a pre-printed setup icon, which just happens to be land one on board A. So the Kingdom of England. Um, so additional lost edition, proud and mighty capital. If there are seven or more towns or cities ever in a single land, the invaders win. Stage two escalation on each board with towns or cities build in the land with the most towns and cities. So you see the synergy there. The escalation marches England ever onward to the auto win for the adversaries, right? So you got to be really careful in making sure that not one land uh, gets to a place where you really can't do any damage to it. Uh, level one fear cards are 10, 3, 4, 3. Game effects uh, for level one are indentured servants earn land. 
invader build actions affect lands without invaders if they are adjacent to at least two towns or cities before the build action right so it's really hard to have the t in in, in um, I guess most adversaries if you can just elim eliminate all invaders in any one land it just doesn't build but now that's really hard to prevent builds because uh, towns and cities in adjacent lands will trigger building um, even if there's nothing in the land that's actually being built in so that becomes a, a, a problem for sure level two the fear cards for level two would be four four three uh criminal and criminals and malcontents during setup on each board we're going to add a city to land one and a town to land two so we're already our coast is looking mighty difficult to address here uh, this would be a great time to play as ocean right um and level number three there are 13 fear cards so that's the level we're playing so i'll get that ready so we have a four a five and a four the rest of the fear cards go in the box four terror level three card five terror level two card and four so fear of victory is going to be especially hard because we have to get through 13 of these puppies before we can do that. High immigration one. All right, so it's it's uh, high immigration one as differentiated from high immigration full, which would be level four. So we're just going to do level three for now, just so we get a sense of what this high immigration tile is all about. We're going to put the high immigration tile on the invader board to the left of Ravage. So it's going to cover what normally was a discard space. Well, now we have an extra invader action, all right? Um, the invaders take this build action each invader phase before ravaging cards slide left from ravage to it and from it to the discard pile we're going to remove the tile when a stage 2 card slides onto it putting that card in the discard pile instead so we're basically getting a double build for the first three or four rounds of the game I think it's just the three first three of the rounds of the game but that obviously is going to add a lot of activity on the board and a lot of towns and cities on the board that we are going to have to deal with. All right, let's see what adversary. I'm sorry, not adversary. The opposite of adversary. Let me see what spirit I'm going to be today. I am going to be keeper of the forbidden wilds. That is an interesting. Um, spirit against England. So. Not sure if I've had this matchup before. So Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds is one of the two. It's the oh, so we've already played with Sharp Fangs behind the leaves. Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds is going to be the second uh, character from the Branch and Claw expansion. So we're going to get through both of those pretty quick on this channel, which is is fun. Um, Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds spread throughout Spirit Island are pockets of deep wilderness, untouched by human hands. A few have a spirit of sanctity about them. The leaves there whisper words of forbiddance, of warnings, of wrath for those who trespass. The Dahan know how to listen and stay well away. A few spirit speakers claim that these wild spirits, powerful as they are, are merely custodians and wardens for others more powerful. Spirits of ancient trees and deep roots who wake neither frequently nor easily. Nobody much cares to test the truth of the matter. All right, so set up. We're going to put one presence and a wilds in the highest number jungle, the wilds. Wilds prevent explore actions in the land where they are. So it's basically just disease, but instead of for build, it is for explore. So they can be really useful. For Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds, they are vital to his ability to control a land. Um, but expending, preventing explore against England when they build, even if there's towns or cities next door, uh, it's not going to be as effective as it might be against some other adversaries, right? So that actually be a really strong. Wilds are really strong against like France, against England. We're going to have to be really strategic in trying to basically quarter off half the board to really prevent building. And if we can keep our our uh, from a strategic standpoint, if I can deal with take care of this town. And then we could deal with, you know, just kind of controlling inland, and then we could start moving toward the um, the coast. I think we might have a chance to basically create like a wall of wilds, which would prevent, you know, at least it would make it harder for activity to kind of creep back inland. So that's kind of my goal 
going into this this game. Playstyle. It's a slowly growing wall. Expanding can sometimes be difficult, but the invaders will have an equally difficult time penetrating wherever the keeper plants itself. In larger games, it may be useful to spread to one or two far distant lands early on to have multiple points from which to slowly grow. All right. So special rules. Anytime you create a sacred place, you push all Dahan from that land. Dahan events never move Dahan to your sacred places, but powers can do so. Any event cards that say something about moving Dahan, uh, they do not, um, you know, they, they can't move to where you have a sacred place. But if I have a power, uh, I can choose to move a Dahan to where I'm at. All right. But uh, it's and when you make create a sacred place, it is a way to kind of move Dahan somewhere else where they might be able to retaliate and kill some invaders during the uh, rapid space. Um, my innate powers punish those who trespass. It is a slow power. Its range is zero, so it has to be used in a place where I have presence. Target land is any. Uh, it does two damage. It destroys one Dahan. For that to happen, I need two suns, one fire, and two plants. And then if I have two suns, two fire, and three plants, I do plus one damage per uh, sun and plant that I have. So that could be really strong. And then um, the four plants split this to power's damage, however desired, between target land and another one of your lands. And your lands, again, are lands that you have presence. My other action here is uh, innate power here is spreading wilds. Also a slow power. You see this is a very slow moving spirit. Uh, one of the uh, uh, best uh, I forget it I don't know who originally said it so I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to steal it from anybody but they said calling uh, Keeper of Forbidden Wilds Angry Groot uh, I thought that was pretty hilarious because it does seem like this plotting slow tree thing but it's really strong and you'll see as we go that it's, resource, it's energy accumulation is really really powerful um, it will start getting a lot of money really quick but then you're kind of at the mercy uh, you know, it's it's ultimate effectiveness is going to be at the mercy of what major powers you can get to do what you need to do, uh, but it, t it takes a little bit to kind of wake up and actually become a, a more powerful spirit because we are going to need to be able to do a lot of damage against an adversary like England. All right, so I'm rambling enough. So spreading wilds is a slow power range one target land cannot have blight. Blight can be a big problem for for keeper of the forbidden wilds. Uh, if I have two suns, I get to push one explorer from target land per two suns I have. Uh, if I have one plant, if target land has no explorers, I can add a wild. If I have three plants, this power has plus one range. If I have a air, it has plus one range. Now these are cumulative and you go in order from top to bottom. So if I had um, just the air, I would be able to do plus one range. If I had both three plants and the air, I'd be plus two range which is nice and it's already a range of one but again the target land can never have blight regardless of the range as far as growth options this is another pick two spirit um, the first option is to reclaim cards gain one energy the other one is gain one power card the third one on here is i can gain a presence uh, to a land that has wilds or my presence and they gain an energy so i'll be doing that one pretty much every round uh, and then the last one is I have to spend three to do it and you can do these in any order So I can actually get energy from another option and then use that energy for this option But it costs three energy I gain a power card and then I can add a presence Three away to a land that three away from a land where I have already have presence um, So it has to be within three and then I have to add it to a land that does not have blight again You're seeing the idea that blight is not good for keeper of the forbidden wilds so I'm gonna put these all on his little tracks here so spending that three can be really useful as to help get your presence on the board uh, quickly and to uncover your growth tracks um, I you know again he does have a lot of money too um, pretty quickly so I, I do expect that I'll be doing that at least once in the earlier rounds to kind of speed up my progression here so here are my four special cards this is the last bit of setup i want to go through before we start playing is going through my four cards i'll do them in uh, energy cost order uh, as a one energy card i have boon of growing power it has a sun a moon and a plant as a speed it's a slow power 
and I can target any spirit. So obviously I would use it to target myself. A target spirit gains a power card. If you target another spirit, they also gain one energy. Don't really love that card in a solo game, but it is what it is. Uh, one energy for regrow from roots. It is a slow power, range one. Target land has to be a jungle or a wetland. If there are two blight or fewer in the target land, remove one blight. So fortunately, our initial blight is in sand, so this will not help me get that off, but it is nice to know that I will be able to get blight off of the board a little bit as we go. All right, uh, two energy card is Synchro Sanct Wilderness. It is a fast card, range one. Target land cannot have blight. I get to push two Dahan, and then I do either two damage per wild in the target land, or I add one Dahan. Um, so I will probably be doing that here this turn to try to again I want to try to control this part of the board and then move my way west across toward the ocean and this board this uh, card has a sun an earth and a plant uh, tag and then the towering wrath wrath not wrath wrath uh, is a three energy card it has a sun a fire and a plant it is a slow power uh, the range is one from where you have a sacred place I don't have any sacred places yet obviously and then target land any two fear for each of your sacred places in adjacent land. Sorry, in or adjacent to the target land. I can do two damage and I get this. I have, but you have to destroy all Dahan. So uh, you want to be careful in doing that. So I'm going to look through my growth options. I'm going to do the. I guess I'll gain a power card. And I'm going to add a presence and gain an energy. So we'll take, gain the power card first. So we want to, what are helpful, right? Suns, plants, and uh, fire. It's my only card. Well, gathering ex towns might be helpful. We want to prevent builds because again the wilds are only going to do so much for us there that's it doesn't have a sun but it does have the plants so we'll stick with this one all right so minor power cards I discard I'm just gonna throw off the screen Now my other option, my other action, I do want two card plays, I just, and then we'll unlock this ton next time. So I'm going to put this into a land with wilds or my presence. Add a presence to a land with wild or your presence. That's rough. Because a land with wilds. Oh, so basically, uh, it's been sorry, it's been a, a little bit. So I, I am definitely creating a sacred place right off the bat. I don't have much of a choice in doing that because I know I can't afford to three to put it in a land without blight. And there's only one land with wilds and only one land with my presence. So it goes there. There are no Dahan. If there were Dahan there, I'd have to push that from the land. But for now, we're good. And then I gain one energy. I go to the presence track. I'm gonna gain. I'm gonna gain two energy from the presence track. And now I can choose two cards to play this turn. The two cards I want to play are this one and. I never set the invader deck. Oops. All right. So invader deck's gonna be normal. So because we have to do the initial explorer action. So we have uh, taking out four. Those are the level three cards. I rolled 
a five. There's only f I rolled a six. I'm sorry. There's only five cards. Now I rolled a five. These go here, and now we have the level one cards. It's a one, and we are going to do the initial explorer action as the last step of setup, and we have a explorer explorer and we know that now these guys are building in the mountains so let's try to move this guy away i want to destroy that so if i can move this guy out of here I actually can prevent a build in that um mountain which would be nice so Okay, this will work. So I, I am actually going to play the card I just got. I have to pay for Sacrosect Wilderness. Uh, these are actually both fast powers. We'll see what I've unlocked here. I do not have anything from my Punish Those Who Trespass track. Uh, I'm close, but I just don't have don't quite have it. But I do have, in the Spreading Wilds track, I have the one plant I need, and I have the one... Um, sky. So basically, I'll be able to add a wild as a slow power to a land that does not have an explorer, which could be pretty nice. The target land cannot have a um, cannot have blight. All right. So uh, let's see my fast powers. I am going to I, my target land is going to be two away from where I have presence. Uh, and it cannot have invaders. So I'm going to target this land and I'm going to gather this explorer here. All right. Now the other one I'm going to push to Dahan. Target land is here. It's a land that doesn't have blight, one away from where I have presence. Uh, it does not have Dahan, so I'm going to not push the Dahan, but I'm going to do two damage per wilds in the target land. And that is going to destroy this town, which is going to generate one fear. And that town is now destroyed. And those are my fast powers. My innate power is a slow power. So we're going to go to the uh, rest of the round. The healthy blighted island effect. We are not blighted, so that doesn't have any effect. We're going to pull our first event card. Putting down riots on an inland land on each board, we're going to replace one explorer with a town. Oh, that's really bad. That is the really, really, really bad card. Uh, shoot. Alright, that was pretty unlucky. Alright, so we're the only inland land I have that has an explorer is this one. So we are going to have to replace that stupid explorer <laughs> with this stupid town. And I that's going to be really bad. All right. Invaders do not ravage on lands with disease or strife. Useless. Each player may push one explorer or town from a land with Dahan. That's not going to help, so I'm not going to do that. All right. That was not ideal. So we are going to do the invader actions. We're going to build... The invaders are going to build a town here, and we're going to go to the other mountain because... So it, you do the calculation before you actually start the build. Um, there is now two cities and towns in adjacent lands. So despite the fact that I moved that explorer out, since that explorer became a town, we are going to have to build a town in here as well, and I'm very much not happy about that. Oh, I don't Yeah, that's a problem. Mm. All right. So we're going to then do the next explore action. We're exploring into wetlands so one there and one there I 
am going to now um, within a range of one where I have presence and the target line doesn't have blight, I can add a and I can uh, actually range two. I can add a wild to a land that does not have uh, that does not have any explorers. So I will add a wild here to try to create my wall across the land but this is looking really bad pretty quick <laughs> so hey welcome to England um, so that's done it's just a really bad event card because um, I was being able to limit issues this that one town really just kind of changes the complexion of how this board looks now especially with my power is all being slow, plus I'm, I'm now looking at a double blight situation. Um, there was a defend card I probably should have taken instead. But hopefully I can get lucky with my power cards here. So we are the invader cards are going to advance. should have done that before I did my slow powers. And now we are going to move on and go to the uh, next round. Time passes, nothing needs to heal. Attempted to reclaim my cards just to try to prevent going blight on island so quick. Oh, man, the reclaiming cards. Yeesh. That card costs too much. Gonna reclaim cards and gain an energy. Not how I would normally be playing this, but kind of where I'm at right now. Um, shoot. Still don't have three money, so I can't do that. But. Uh, so I'm going to add a presence to the sands, and it's going to unlock sun. And then the next presence I get out, I'll be getting four turns. I can pretty much do that as much as I need. That last growth option to allow me to get more flexibility in getting my presence out on the board. So the I get another energy for that action. So I got one energy for the reclaiming cards, one energy for adding a presence to a land that has presence or my wilds or my presence and then I'm going to get two energy for the presence track and now I'm going to pick two cards I think I might pick the same two this is blighting for sure I don't have, I can't stop that but I might be able to stop more than that. I, I think I'm going to pick the same two cards to be honest with you. Alright, here we go. I'm going to pay for the Sacred Wilderness. I have, uh, now I have two suns, one fire, and two plants because of the extra sun on my presence track. And then I have the same thing over here with the one and the one, but I also have two suns, so I have a slow power that allows me to push 
an explorer from a target land. For, so I can press one because I can do one per every two suns I have, and I'll have two suns. All right. So what I'm going to do. All right. So looking at my, my slow powers and what I'm going to be able to do there, what, what makes sense here is I'm going to gather everything's building. There's nothing I can do with that. So I'm going to use Lore of the Unknown to gather. I'm going to my target land is here, and I'm going to gather this town into that target land. And I can do that because there's no invaders there. And then I'll be able to quickly take care of that with my innate power, punish those who trespass. Then with the Sacred Wilderness, I'm going to target a land here. It's within a range of one from a land and it doesn't have blight. I'm going to push two Dahan. So I'm going to push this Dahan here. And then I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to... Okay. Last turn, when I added a wilds, I could land at any land that does not have explorers. There's an invader here, but not an explorer, so I'm going to do that. And then I would have had to put this presence here. But that makes a lot more sense than what I did. Um, so I'm going to push this, and now I do two damage per wilds in that land. And clearly, again, the whole point of my whole turn was to set this up. So I just made a mistake when I put the, uh, the presence here. Um, I'm sorry, put the wilds here. And again, you can put a wilds wherever there's not explorers. So that was totally legit from last turn. And then I will do two damage per wild. So I'm going to destroy this one. And that generates one fear. All right. So that is done with my fast powers. We now go to the rest of the round. There is no blood island effect. We're going to pull this event card. A strange madness among the beasts. They grow even wilder and more savage. You may. Uh, each beast destroys a dot so I can either do two one or two things I could let the beast rab rampage until death um, or I could guide the madness so if I let them rampage until death each beast destroys a Dahan and then I remove one beast from each board so if I did that there's no Dahan in that land to destroy but I would have to remove that beast otherwise I can guide the madness I can spend three energy per beast you decide to keep uh, and I can um, So I had to spend three energy to save that beast. And I would push that beast to an adjacent land. All right, I, I may. So I could just spend three energy to keep the beast that's on the board. Um, I'm going to do it, so I'm going to spend the rest of my energy, so it's going to affect what I was planning on my growth option next turn, but I'm spending three energy to save that beast and keep it on the island. It's my only beast, and it's going to have some utility, especially if you look at the rest of this card. All right, so I saved that beast by spending three energy. It's aided by animal, I'm sorry, it's aided by, yeah, it's aided by animal. I don't have any animal tags, so again, aiding, aiding is you get one per animal tag in play, if I discard the card from here to the other side of my board, it would be plus two. And if I forgot a power of the animal, it would be plus four. But again, I wasn't able to use any of that aided by ability in this instance. So I spent three energy. I had it. Uh, I saved the beast. So we're good there. Now each spirit may push one beast to adjacent land. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it right where it is. Now each beast destroys one explorer and deals two damage. So this is destroyed. And then in addition to that destruction, we are going to deal two damage. This beast is going to destroy this town. And that is going to give me one fear. And I'm still going to ravage and it's still going to blight. But it's really going to keep that land in much more in control. And remember, with a double build action on the, on the invader line, it's going to be important that I don't let any one land get too many buildings because of the additional loss condition. So it just makes sense to try to destroy that. Um, now while I can it cost me so I basically spent three energy to destroy a town and an explorer is how that worked out 
On each board, push two Dahan from a land with Beast, Disease, or Wilds to a land without any of these. Um, I have to do that. The only land that is Dahan that has any of these is this one. So I'm going to move this to here. So it goes to a land with Blight, but you know, it is what it is. So that is done. We now go to the invader actions. The invaders are going to ravage in this mountain. That does cause a blight. I have no presence there, so I don't lose a presence. And uh, there's no Dahan there, so no Dahan are killed by that. Um, we're going to do a build action. We're going to build in here. And we're going to build. We would build here, but there's a disease that prevents that build. We go to the next invader card. And we are now exploring into jungles. So they explore here. The wilds here prevents the exploration into that jungle. So that explorer does not get on the board. And then the cards all move. Normally, the mountain card would move and be discarded. However, with the high immigration tile, the mountain stays right there. All right. So now we're going to my slow actions. Uh, on a land where I have presence, I can I have again the two uh, suns, the, the the fire and the two plants. I'm going to do two damage and destroy that town, which generates my fourth fear of the game, and I now earn a fear card that will be resolved next turn, which is good that we're finally breaking into those. And then lastly, I can add another wild. I'll be more careful this time around. I can add a wild to a land that does not have an explorer, and because I have a sky element, uh, I can do it uh, plus, I can do it two away from where I have presence, and it has to be a land that doesn't have a blight. So I will actually, mm, we're going to move into the phase two invader cards. I know I do want to get more on the coast, so two away. Shoot, I can't reach here. I will put it. That's ravaging there next turn. That's gross. Can't do it there because there's blight. I can't do it there because there's explorer. I could reach here I could push this Explorer away but it's not gonna matter because there's still two buildings there I'm gonna put it here just try to set myself up for the future um, or having a wilds in the middle of the coast could prove helpful but we'll see it's not looking great right now not gonna lie so these cards will come over here. Those are the extent of my slow powers. And now we will go to time will pass. Nothing needs to heal. Uh, and we will uh, then proceed to the next growth phase. Yikes. So here's a wild gets. I'm sorry, here's where uh, the high immigration tile gets trippy. So we know that the mountains are going to build again. They are not ravaging again. So where we're doing, where the ravaging is happening, is the ravaging is going to happen here and here, which puts me in the same precarious place I've been. Um, the good news is I have ha kind of accomplished my 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 goal is I, I just want to prevent as much building in this part of the board as possible um, I do think I'm going to reclaim my same cards again uh, I hate doing the same thing over and over and over again but it does seem to be the most effective my only chance really to get kind of get on top of this board so I'm going to play the same well I'm definitely playing the sacred wilderness first let me go through the growth options more slowly and systematically. So I reclaim my cards, I gain an energy. I'm going to gain 
a presence to a land with wilds or my presence, I'm going to gain another sacred place here. Now I'm going to I wish I had a blight in the jungle or a wetland, I'd be removing that, but I don't. Wow, that's interesting. Towering Wrath is the way it uses your sacred places. That's going to be a nice thing to have in the future, but. The only places where I have presence are a mountain and a jungle. Definitely going blighted this turn, but that's gonna be something I'm just gonna have to deal with. Um, gonna add a presence. Already did that. Um, so I gain another energy for doing that action, and then I'm gonna gain four energy from the presence track, and then we're gonna play Towering Wrath and Lore of the Unknown. So Lore of the Unknown, I am going to gather. Gather a town into a land that doesn't have a beta. I'm going to put it where I have wilds. It just gives me the most options. Uh, so that is done. That is my only fast action. I, let me check what of these I've unlocked. I have this. If I had one more plant, this would be actually huge, but I don't. But I will have that soon, hopefully. I have this. And I have all, again, the same three of these four over here. So, we now go to the Blight of the Island effect, there is none, we go to the event deck, event deck says new species spread, new plants and animals brought by the invaders damage the local ecology, I may, there's two options here, one, I can let the invasive species bloom, or two, I can transmute the worst of these species, four energy aided by moon. Uh, so if I let the invasive species bloom, for each board, discard the top minor power. If it is a fast power, I add a, a blight to a land with towns or cities. After resolving this card, it goes to the, the, the event deck under the top two cards. Or I can spend four, aided by moon. Uh, 
uh, on each board add a a beast to a land with towns and cities and generate one fear for players. So I'm going to do that. So aided by a moon. I have one moon tag in play. So now I need to spend four, so that reduces that by one. I'm going to... I'm never using this power. What did it have? Either discard this. I want to. I'll save this to forget it later, when I want to gain a major power. So, um, so we're going to discard this. It gives me credit for two more, and then I'm going to spend one to give me four. So I've done option B. I transmuted the worst of the species. I generate a fear, and I can add a beast to a land with towns or cities. I will add it to this uh, I'll add it to this layer I'll add it to this land sometimes there's power in, in stacking your beasts uh, in one land so I'm going to hope that works and go from there on half of the boards rounding up we add a disease to a land with both Dahan and invaders do two damage to Dahan there so I'm going to add a disease to both half the board rounding up, so one. Um, Don Invaders is here or here, and I want to do two damage to Don. I do not want to lose that Don there, so I'm just going to do it here, and I'm going to have to kill this Don because these foreign diseases are hell for the indigenous peoples. All right, each spirit with at least two Don among its lands. That is not me, so that is done. We now go to the earned fear cards. Uh, we are still in level one. In Leech Land, defend one per Dahan. Okay, <laughs> thanks, I guess. Go from there. Invader action. So now we see the high immigration tile at work. We're going to do a build action in the mountains. There and there. We are going to ravage in the wetlands. We're ravaging here. Defended one. The Dahan's retaliate. That explorer is dead. But unfortunately, the other ravage is going to cause us to go to Blighted Island. Moment of truth. Blighted Island. Immediately on each board, destroy one beast. Uh, then add a blight to a land with towns and cities. Yowza. That's bad. If I add a blight there, I have to kill a presence. And if I add a blight anywhere else, I am cascading. Oh, that's really bad. I can't destroy that presence. All right, so I'm destroying a beast. This is my only option for that. Add a blight. Oh, I put five blight on this card, and then immediately I have to spend one of those. I'm going to put it here, and then that's going to cascade and go here. Okay. So now we are building. Uh, this disease prevents building there but we do build a town here. We're gonna do the final explore action, jungle. We have a source in both jungles, but the escalator is on each board with towns and cities built in the land with the most towns and cities. That is, these are all tied with two. Um, I'm gonna build a town here because I think that makes the most sense. All right, everything moves over. Finally, this mountain comes off the high immigration tile. And now as soon as this card is a level two card gets here, then we can remove the, the high immigration tile. So we only have the high immigration tile to deal with the next two turns. 
All right, so I am going to, on a land where I have presence, I'm going to do two damage and destroy one Dahan. So I'm going to do that here. There's no Dahan there to destroy, but I took care of that town. And then I'm going to, I can push one explorer. Target land doesn't have blight, so I can push this explorer out of there. I'm going to push him here. And then um, since target land now has no explorer, so again, this is this is you do this in order. So first I push. Now it has no explorer, and it has to be the same target land, right? So I pushed it. It has no explorers there now. I can add a wilds, which will help hopefully allow me to regain control over the eastern, the northeastern portion of the island again. So this whole innate power of spreading wilds is done. Now, lastly, I'm going to do Towering Wrath. I'm going to generate two fear, which gives me another fear card. And for each of my sacred places in, in or adjacent to the target land, this is my target land. I'm going to do two damage. So that's a total of four damage because there's a sacred place here and a sacred place here. Uh, and I'm going to kill both of these. Now, normally I'd want to kill the city. The reason why I'm killing both the towns is because I don't want, um, them to I don't want England to be able to build here next turn and remember if it's adjacent to a land with at least two cities or towns it's going to build so this time it's more strategic to kill the two towns because now all we have here is a one city which means it will not build in that jungle right so both those towns are killed I generate two fear and that is that card in full so slow powers are done. We are going to now uh, times in the past. Anything will heal. There is nothing to heal. And we go to the next round. Yowza. There's only three rounds. It feels like a hundred. Man, this game really, really burned the brain, dude. All right. So now we are going to... They're ravaging here, so that's bad. Um, and then they're definitely going to build, which is... Uh, these cards clearly aren't going to do it. I'm going to have to reclaim my cards again. This is not a pattern I'm used to in this game. I've kind of been stuck in a desperate times, desperate measures situation here. Um, and then I'm going to gain a... I'm going to put a presence. Now, again... If I pay to three, I have to add a present to a land that doesn't have blight. But uh, when, if you, when you're doing this one, it can be within three to a land that has wilds or your presence. Since this has wilds, I'm going to add a presence here because uh, I want to try to establish a presence on the coast. I think it's going to be really important if I have any chance of winning this game. All right, so that is done i get another energy for that and now i'm going to get five energy from the energy track so lots of energy i'm going to try to kill everything in this mountains and really continue my 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 push to just kind of get everything toward the coast um, the coast looks like a mess right now, but it's the best I can do. I'm going to take the same two cards again because it just makes sense. I can potentially fix that blight. Uh, 
I, I want to take that blight off with my regrow from roots card. The problem is if I don't move one of these explorers, um, I'm in trouble because this well this ravage of two with these two weenie explorers is going to be enough to cause a blight and kill this Don. I could risk it with between the event card and the fear deck, hoping that something allows me to either defend the coast or take away an explorer. But I, I think that's a a, a risk I don't need to take right now. Um, I don't have if I had wilds there that'd be nice, but I don't. All right, so we're gonna go back to the same two cards I did last turn. And we're going to pay for this one. Um, all right. So fast power. I can uh, target land. cannot have invaders. So this sands miraculously doesn't have invaders. I'm going to gather this explorer to prevent this ravage. So that is done. I should indicate what I have unlocked here. Again, I have that. And I have those three in spreading wilds again so those are my fast powers we now go to the blood of Lilith effect there is no continual effect we've already done everything that we needed to do because of that blood of Lilith card and now we pick the next event card just making sure there's four there so we've been doing this right rising interest in the island your island is unlike any of the invaders have seen their leaders begin to take interest in tales of strangeness you may I have two options. I can ignore the curiosity or I can weave lies in the minds of their observers. So option A, ignore the curiosity. I would return the top card of the invader deck to the box. Woo. <sighs> I need to add a town to a land without one. Don't love it. Or I can return the top fear card to the box, but during the next ra normal ravage, I have each town and city does plus one damage. So that's not actually not going to affect me. So that's actually good. It's aided by sky, and the cost is four. So I have one sky in play, so I need three more. I'm going to have to pay for it because I cannot afford to put another town on the board. Now with England's special little build conditions. So aided by Sky, I did one, I paid three more, so we're good. I'm going to return the top fear card to the box, which is helpful. We might get to tower level two uh, pretty quick here then, which is nice. Uh, and again, towns or cities do plus one during the next ravage, but again, there is no town or city ravaging, which is nice. On each board, add one beast to a jungle without blight. This is the only location where that applies. One fear if invaders are present. Oh wait, I'm sorry, to a jungle without blight. I can add it here, and there's no because there's no blight in that jungle, and one fear if invaders are present. On each board, add a wild to a land with Dahan. That's actually really huge for me with the way I um, can add energy to a land with wilds. I'm going to put this wild here and try to prevent any encroachment. I'm just trying to create a wall uh, in into the rest into the whole eastern half of this island. So that should be really helpful in doing that. All right, now we go to the Erin Fear card. Each player removes one explorer. Yep, <laughs> saw this coming. Uh, I'm gonna move an explorer from a land with Dahan. I'm gonna move this explorer from the sands. And that is looking a lot better. And now we'll go down here. We now go to the invader actions. Invaders are gonna build in this wetlands this car is going to come off they're going to ravage oh, I'll leave it there when, oh, I'm, it's going to come off when we uh, move the cards forward we're going to ravage uh, ravage here that Dahan is injured but he retaliates this explorer is dead it was only a damage of one so there is no blight uh, invaders are going to build in jungles they will build here because they're adjacent to a land with three towns and cities they will not build here because it's only adjacent to one city, which is exactly why I took those two towns off last round. And then we go to the invaders. All right, so we're done with that. So in the last card, the invaders are going to explore into 
sands. There is no source here. There's a source here. And we have to do the escalator as well. The invaders are going to do a build action in the land with the most towns or cities. So now we are up to four towns in this wetlands, or four towns and cities in this wetlands. So that's looking a little precarious. So we're going to have to pay attention to that in the next couple of rounds. Everything advances. And now we go to our slow actions. Yowza. I have so much played everywhere. <laughs> All right. So let's do this one by one. I can do two damage in a land where I have presence. I have to destroy a Dahan. Um, I'm going to do two damage here, which will help me control the number of towns and cities in there a little bit. So I've destroyed that. I generate a fear. It gives me a fear card. It gets up to terror level two. So there's no Dahan there to destroy, so that is fine. Now I have to target a land that doesn't that doesn't have blight. And the only relevant land it would be here. Uh, I'm gonna push one explorer. There are no explorers there. Uh, if there are no explorers, I can add a wild, and I will add a wild here. Uh, and that is good. And my last slow power, uh, I can, again, two fear are generated. And then for each of my sacred places in or adjacent to this land, I can do two damage and I destroy all Dahan. That's a total of four damage. And I'm going to destroy both this city and this explorer and generate two fear, which gives me yet another fear card. So I'll have two fear cards next round at tower level two, which should be really helpful. All right. So, Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds. We, you see how we've been able to, again, we establish wilds, we've established kind of a wall. Our difficulty going forward is that four of the, the these five lands have blight in it. So it's gonna make me doing what I wanna do a little bit more, a little bit more difficult, but compared to how we started, I feel somewhat okay about this. So, what am I gonna do now? Uh, times in the past, this Dahan is going to heal. These cards will come over here, and then we will proceed to the growth option once again. Okay, this turn. The invaders are building and then ravaging in jungles. That back-to-back -back action is going to be rough, because if I don't do anything here, they're going to build a city and then ravage. The crazy thing is, even if I destroy this town, because of England special rules, they're still gonna build another town right away and then ravage. So some kind of defense with these fear cards is gonna be, we're gonna need to get lucky, pretty much. I, there's no other way around that. But what I wanna do is try to remove a blight. So I'm not going to reclaim my cards for once. Uh, it's going to be some more options with my with my growth options here. I'm going to add a presence to a land that has my presence or a uh, or a wild. I unlocked another plant, which is nice. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to add a presence here. I gain an energy. Now my second growth option, since I didn't reclaim my cards, I could spend three to put another presence out. I don't want to do that. I am going to gain a power card and I'm going to make it a major. So I think we're at that point where this makes some sense. So our options here. So none of them have suns, which isn't great. Um, Blazing Renewal. Target Spirit places two of the destroyed presence. I don't have any destroyed presence, so that's probably useless. 
uh, sea monsters. I can add a beast for each beast, two damage, and two fear, and three damage. For each blight, I get one damage. And if I have three waters and three beasts, I get to repeat that. That's probably not going to happen. Winds of Rust and Atrophy, one fear, defend six. Liking this sound. Replace one city with a town or one town with a, an explorer. And it only costs three. Uh, dissolve the bonds of kinship. I can replace one city with two explorers. Replace one town with one explorer. And replace one Dahan with an explorer. And then push all from target land to as many different lands as possible. Don't. I don't really love that card, especially because I can't do the special hit on the ability there. I think we're going to take the Winds of Rust and Atrophy. The ability to defend six at any one time could prove very. Uh, game changing, and then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna forget Lore of the Unknown. It served its purpose, but everything that I'm dealing with right now, the target lands all have invaders, and I don't really feel like re establishing invaders in any of the lands where I've removed them from, so we're just gonna forget that. Thank you for your service. All right, all right, so again, we're building and ravaging in. Um, and notice I forgot a card I already played that's totally allowed. You can get any card you want. I am going to try to get one of those Blight off. And I'm going to play Sacred Wilderness. Now oh, I have to gain my 5 for the Presence track. You see the, the money accumulation, the Presence, the energy accumulation for, for Keeper is, is pretty strong, which is nice. Yeah, if I can get a card like Tsunami or something like that, like a major power that can just do a total amount of destruction on the coast, that'd be a deal right now. But we'll do with what we got. And having the defense six again could prove pretty helpful here. So we're gonna do fast powers. Um, I can target a land one within range one that doesn't have blight. So this doesn't have blight yet, which is nice. I can push one Don. I'll push this Don here. And I do two damage per wilds in the land, so that is going to kill that town, and that generates a fear, and we're good there. Now it's going to build another town, anyway, but hopefully it's only a town, and hopefully there's something we can do about it um, when the time comes. Uh, what do I have unlocked here? I don't have. Huh. Maybe I don't want to forget that power. I want to forget this power instead because that element could prove very important. So I'm not going to have it this turn. I'm not going to have it this turn, but I do want that fire for a future turn. When I, if I could, so if I put this match this with towering wrath, that's going to be hugely important. So this was actually in my used cards. So I'm going to be reclaiming cards into this turn anyway. And that's probably what I'm going to do next turn. All right. So um, we, I, so I don't have any of, of the Punish Those Who Trespass powers unlocked, but I do have this unlocked. I have three plants, which is nice. Uh, and that will prove useful there. All right, cool. So, um, my slow power, my fast powers are done. We're going to go to Blight of the Island effect. There is no effect. We are going to go to the event cards. Oh, man. It's going to Blight. I'm going to remove the Blight. That's fine. We're going to do the event cards. Uh, Blighted Island, invaders, new cash crops take hold, invaders immediately ravage one terrain type not showing under in any invader action. Spirits may prevent this on any all boards by destroying two presents on each board to be protected. I'm going to destroy these two presents to protect this board because I could not afford that ravage. Because they would have to ravage in wetlands, which is a problem, or would have to manage ravage in mountains. Because what I'm showing here is jungles and sands so I, I really can't let that happen so now I have destroyed two presents which 
maybe that happened last turn, I would have taken the other major power card that involved the destroyed presence, but you know, it is what it is. On each board, add one beast to a land without blight that has towns. That is not applicable to my current situation. Uh, during Ravage and every land, defend one per Dahan. And of course, I moved that Dahan, so that's not great. So that is done. So if I can move a Dahan back there with the fear cards, that'd be great. So we'll see. Uh, skip the next normal build. The build card remains in place instead of moving left. Um, I guess that's okay. Defend two in all lands with presence. Each spirit gains one energy per sacred place they have in lands with invaders. So I get one energy but I do not. So I defend two in all lands of presence, which is still going to leave me in trouble there. But there's nothing I can do about that now. All right. So we're now going to carry out the invader cards. Invaders are going to build here. They don't build there. They're going to ravage here. So I do get a blight. I have no dawn or presence there. So we're good. They don't ravage there. We're going to they were skipping the normal build and then we're going to explore in coastal lands so we're going to get explore oop never mind this wild prevents that explore this wild prevents that explore uh, and then we're going to explore here all right uh, these cards move left this stage two card moved onto the high immigration tile, so that comes out of the game, and now we have our normal discard pile. This build card remains, and there's now gonna be no Ravage next turn, which is actually really nice and fortuitous for where we're at right now. So, what do I wanna do? If there are two or fewer, I wanna be able to use Punishers or Trespass in this land. Um, so a nice thing about coastal lands too is it doesn't trigger the escalator so that's actually really helpful so I want to be able to move this blight so target land is either a jungle or a wetland it's within one of where I have presence obviously there's a sacred place there I can remove this blight and now that's going to open up a world of options for me when you remove a blight from the board it goes onto the blighted island card and we can call this a day Wait, so that's done uh, and then I can push uh, this from here. I have to push, target land has to have, again, you have to do this all in the same land. So I can push an explorer from a, a target land that doesn't have blight. So this is the only one that applies. I'm going to push this guy here because there's beast. Maybe that will, no, I'll push it here. Uh, if target land now has no explorers, which this one doesn't, then we could add a wilds. And again, we want wilds based on some of our abilities that allow us to do damage with the wilds. All right, so these cards are done. They come over here. We now go to the, the growth option phase. So I'm gonna reclaim my cards as one of my two options, and I'm gonna gain an energy. I'm now going to shoot so I can spend three to gain a power card and add a presence to a land without blight the only reason I would do that though is to get so if I can try to get the three card plays which could be really useful. Or I just gain another power card. Yeah, let's get up to three card plays. Cause then I could discard I could start paying that remove a blade card every round. 
because I still have two that I could apply for it. Eesh. All right, so I'm spending three to add a presence. There's three away without blight. I'll put it here. And then I can grab a power card. I will grab Alright, two of these have fire, which is good. Add disease is good. One damage defend four. This might prove useful next turn, so I will take that card. Uh, okay, that will go over here. So now I go to the presence phase. I'm grabbing five, and I can play two cards. Oh, shh. I made a sacred place there last turn. I'm allowed, my powers are what push that dot in there, and my powers can do so. So I was allowed to move a Dahan into that town. Just making sure I didn't mess up my special rule here. So let me, I'm gonna have to withdraw another Blight. I'm gonna kinda set myself up in a little precarious situation this round, but I think that's what's gonna be for the best for next round. Generating as much fear as possible. Defend. Oh shit, I should have three actions in the next round, which will be helpful. So I have a lot of defend cards too, so I don't hate where I'm at. Might have made a couple of missteps. Oh shoot. Now I'll do this. Cost me three. So I'm not going to have any fast actions, but I want at least one fire out there. That's fine. So I have no fast actions. 
Uh, as far as my innate powers, I do have I have two suns, a fire, and at least two plants. And then I have two suns. I have I do not have the sky, but I have the top three of spreading wilds. So we're done with the uh, growth phase. We're now going and the presence phase. I picked my cards, so now we're going to go to the rest of the order. The lighted island effect. There is no continuing effect. I'll move this here since we know what's happening. Um, and then we're going to um, go to the event card. We are in stage two. You can tell the stage by looking at the top card of the invader deck. In each land with at least two cities, replace half of the cities rounding up with cities with city, oh yeah, with these two towns, replace half of the towns with these two cities. So I actually have no land with just with two towns, which is kind of magical. There's one town here, one town here, one town there. So that worked out really well. Invaders do not ravage in lands with disease or strife. They're not ravaging anyway. Um, on each board, push two Dahan from a land with a city to a land without a city. So I have one Dahan here. I'm going to push it here because there are no cities in that jungle. That event card is done. We now go to the invader actions. There are no earned fear cards this time around. Invaders are going to build in all the coastal lands. So they're going to build a city, a town, and a town. Thank God we got that event card this time and not next time. And they're also going to build in the sands. Both of these event cards move. There's going to be a lot of ravaging next turn. And then we take, oh, there's still one more stage two cards. So then we do the explorer. Invaders are exploring into this mountain. This, this wild comes away, so don't explore there. And we're gonna do a build action in the land with the most towns or cities. That is still this wetlands. So we're gonna another town here based on the escalator. So everything after this is gonna be a stage three card. So looking a little precarious. All right, so I am going to do my special, uh, my innate, oh, I have four actions here. So I'm gonna do two damage in a land where I have presence. Um, so I'm gonna do two damage to one of these towns. That generates a fear. Um, that's done. I'm gonna then do two damage. I'm gonna do two more fear. Generates a fear card. Uh, and then I'm gonna do two damage for each of my sacred places in or adjacent. There's only that one sacred place, so that does two more damage. So I'm gonna kill this town, which generates a fear. And then I'm going to destroy all Dahan. There are no Dahan in that wetland because again, it got moved per the event to here. And per event, it can't move into a land that has a sacred place. So I couldn't move it into there, but I couldn't move it to here because I do not have a sacred place in that jungle. Uh, and then my other slip power, if there are two or fewer, um, so target land has to be a jungle or a wetland. If there are two or fewer blight in target land, remove one blight. So I will remove this blight. And now we have four blight on the card, which is nice. I have one last um, event, and I'm going to uh, one that's a nate power, so I can push an explorer. I'll push. Target land cannot have blight, so I just remove that blight. So I'm going to push an explorer from here, and. Uh, if there's no explorers there now, I can add wilds, and that is done. All right, coast is looking rough. This is like the anti-ocean game, <laughs> which I guess Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds that makes sense. All right, so we are good there. All right, time passes. Nothing has to heal, so then we go back to the growth phase. Um, I'm fine with these three cards. You know what? Actually, I pushed this here and put a wild. I'm going to go back and undo this in a power, and I'm just going to add 
I'm gonna push, there's no explorers. Since there's no explorers here, I'm gonna add another wild there so I can start stacking damage in that location. So I'm gonna do, oh no. Yeah, I have to, this defend four has to go. This power, I can defend this, assuming nothing funny. I'm not going to get my two. If I can find a way to get Second fire index would be really, really strong for me, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I have to do my growth options. I guess I, the other option is I take one of these cards back, but that's not going to happen. All right, so let me do my growth options. So I have these four cards. Sorry, this, this game will. Make your head spin. Oh, I can maybe do four cards. Well, I have the money. I think I'll have the money. All right, let me try to do all four of these. Just kind of go for broke here. So I'm going to add a presence into a land that has my presence or a wild, so put that there, and I gain one energy. And I'm gonna spend three to gain another presence. I'm gonna put it to a land that doesn't have blight. I'll make a sacred place out here. Who cares? I, oh, the land doesn't have a blight. I can put it uh, here. That's fine. Then I get five money. I'm going to then play all four of these cards. So three, one, and two. And that gives me everything I want from my elements. All right, get how I really reason this out. So I have two suns, I have 
two fire and I have three vegetation. I do not have three plants. I do not have the fourth plant. I don't know why I always insist saying vegetation in this game. I have two suns. I have three plants. So I have all of these as well. So those are my slow powers. So let's see how I can try to defend this. I am going to target a land with a Dahan. I'm going to defend four here. I'm going to gather into a land that doesn't have invaders. I'm going to gather one town or explorer. I'm going to gather this town into this land because it does not have invaders. I'm going to uh, generate one fear. And I'm going to defend six in this land. So this, it's within three of a sacred place. Um, and uh, trying to let me get another reminder token of another color. So when I do this, I turn this city into a town. So that's attacking eight. Hopefully the beast does some damage. And then that defended six will work. Don't kind of gamble in a little bit, but don't really have much of a choice there. And then lastly, I can push two Dahan, there are none, and I'll do two damage per wild in this land, because this land does not have blight, so I can target it. So I'm doing four damage here, which is going to allow me to a little bit. I'm going to generate two fear cards. We're at level two. I got to do it. It's going to be risky, but I got to do it. All right, so I'm doing four damage here. So it kills this city. And I'm going to do one damage to this city. So I'll put it on a side. So we see two buildings from the top. So it means it still has two health left. This city is dead. That generates two fear, so I get a second fear card. And that is done. So I have two my innate powers left are still slow. They're good. We now go to the Blight of Island effect. There is no continuing effect. We go to the event card. Blight of Island. And each bore with a city. Add one blight to a land with the city. Cannot do that. City neighbor spirits may prevent this on any all boards are turning two of their presence. From each board to be protected. I'm going to destroy these two presents and we'll go from there. Each beast destroys one explorer. So this is destroyed and this destroyed. That was perfecto. That's exactly what I needed. So that is done. On each board, add one Dahan to a jungle or a wetland with a Dahan. I will add a Dahan here, which is also perfecto. That was a great event card. All right. Um, we now go to the fear effects. Each player adds a strife to a different land with at least two invaders. Then each invader takes one damage per strife it has. Huh. So I'm going to add a strife. If I get it. So right now this is attacking. Five. So if I can get a defend one, those are going to die anyway. Now I'm going to do it down here. So I'm going to add a strife here. And then it's going to take one damage per stripe it has. So now this is down to two. And now it makes sense why I did that in a second. I will go to, I'm going to blight here, but I should 
be okay because it's not cascading and I'll just lose the sacred place but that's also okay because I still will have presence there which will allow me to do punish those who trespass. Alright, so that's fine. Each player removes up to three health of invaders from a land with disease or one explorer from an inland land. Uh, there is no disease on the board, so I'm just going to remove this explorer, even though he would have died during the ravage anyway, but such is life. Alright, that is done. Invader actions. Invaders are ravishing seven here. I'm defending six, so that is defended. There are no Dahan to be injured, but that action is carried out. The invaders are ravishing uh, five here. We are defended four, um, so that Dahan is injured. Dahan retaliate. This city was already damaged through the fear effect and the stripe that was added to it, so they retaliate four. Four damage kills both that town and that city. That generates three fear, and we are good there. Um, the, da, the, the invaders are going to ravage five here. It is not defended, so we're going to add a blight back from the blight card and destroy one presence. It's a lot of destroyed presence, but uh, it does not cascade, which is good. And that is all of the ravaging to happen this turn. That went way better than I feared, and we're good there. We are now going to build. The invaders are going to build here. And they are going to build in this mountain here because it's adjacent to at least four or at least two before the build action happened. And then we go to the explore card. We're exploring into mountains and sands. So we're at that cusp. We're right at a turning point. We need to figure out a way to win this thing quick because now that we are on level three, we pretty much have no chance to outpace the invaders. We just need to reach our terror level victory before uh, we lose our opportunity. So right now, um, if we can get rid of all the cities and then generate five more fear, we'll have a Terra level three victory, which would be great. So let's take this one at a time. We're going to uh, go punish those who trespass. We're doing two damage uh, in a land where I have presence. I still have presence here, even though I lost one during the ravage. Uh, and then plus one damage per sun and plant I have. I have one, two, three suns, and one, two, three plants. So I'm doing uh, two damage. And then again, this is cumulative, plus three damage. I'm doing five damage. I'm going to do five damage in this land, which is going to kill that town and that city for three more damage. So one comes down. There's a remainder of two. And I generate that fear card. And two more fear. I will have terror level three so my whole goal now is to kill this city before as a fast action next turn before they do a build right so my last of oh, these all move over uh, my last action is I can remove uh, one explorer from a land with, uh, with no blight range one I'm going to push this. Uh, so he's pushed here. And because I do have two sons, so I can do that. And then, so there's no more explorers there, I can add a wilds and kind of reestablish my eastern border. And that is done. Whoo! All right. So, our whole goal right now is to destroy that city. And I think we'll be able to do it potentially the cheap way. <laughs> but we go back to growth. I'm going to reclaim my cards as one of my two growth options and take an energy. So I have one more growth option. Uh, yeah, I can replace that town. I just need to generate a fear and I can replace that. So I just need a fast action that generates a fear. Blight there, blight there. Fast action. Right, time passes, so this heals. So a fast action that generates a fear. You only 
I do this in a land that doesn't have blight? You know what? I pushed that from there. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to actually, this does land is no I'm going to push this from there and add a wild there. So that way I can generate a fear. Again, I'm that. That's the third time I've I've undid that innate power, um, as I've thought through what I wanted to do the next turn. But again, each time the information available to me was what it was, uh, and it, you know that would have been the right move each time. So anyone who's cringing about that, sorry. But again, this is solo playthroughs, not group playthroughs. So <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want to do. Um, so let me do this and this for sure. I still have um, one more action I can choose. I will add a presence there. I get another money. And I get seven more money. And then I have four card plays. So that costs whatever it costs. Not gonna overthink this. When I, oh, I generated the, well, yeah. So um, I'm going to uh, target a land without blight with Sacred Strike Wilderness. I'm gonna push two. I mean, I've unlocked, I think, all of those, but they're all slow powers, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna push two Dahan. I'm gonna do two damage per wild. So I do damage that to destroy that. And then I'm going to do this. I'm gonna generate one fear defend six in this land and we're going to replace a city with a town a t and that is that since I earned that fourth fear this comes down we're at terror level three I have no cities on the board and that is a terror level three victory Ooh. <laughs> all right um I don't think we were winning that one for a while but uh yeah, I think I, I definitely messed up a little bit uh, down the stretch. It seemed like we were in control, then we weren't in control. Um, event cards were, were giving and taking away back to back to back. Uh, but uh, that is uh, that's a cool that was a cool cool game. England's very tough. That high immigration tile is brutal. Uh, leaving the high immigration tile on the board for the full game is really brutal. Uh, level five England actually gives the towns and cities more health. We never would have won, I think, on level four or five, uh, based on that game. But uh, I am more than happy to win it on level three. So that is uh, Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds. Um, you just see the power of establishing dominance on half the board, and then just kind of holding onto your butts and hoping for the best with the other half. Um, if we had to keep playing. Well, we have two fear cards, which is nice. Uh, I mean, I don't know how uh, that would have done some ravaging. We would have had to get real lucky. We're, they're building in sands and mountains. I mean, the, the whole middle of the board would have become kind of a mess. Um, at least we, we survived the onslaught on the coast. The question is, could we have cleaned up in the middle of the board? The good thing is we are not going to have to find out because we had our um, our uh, our Terra level three victory. So uh, very very happy about that playthrough. Um, that was cool. That was cool. Not the uh, not the spirit I was uh, kind of looking to play today. But um, again, one of the reasons I really like randomizing. Uh, with my app is that it really helps force me to get back to some spirits I have I have neglected for far too long um, but Angry Groot prevails again uh, we uh, are now 4 for 4 in Spirit Island I assure you my record in Spirit Island will not be unblemished uh, before uh, my time doing this channel is over um, but uh, glad to put out some spirits there hopefully this was informational uh, educational uh, to some people. Hopefully, it's inspiring to kind of see an experienced player of this game still kind of struggling through and having to piece it out. This is a very puzzly game um, that does take some time to really think through your options. And again, you'll see I'm a little 
you know, I, I, I'm not going to undo things that are, you know, four turns earlier, but, uh, you know, realizing that I, as my slow power, I placed the, the wilds in the wrong place or the non-optimal place. I have no problem with just kind of, oh, you know what? I could have put that there. That would have made sense if had I stopped and really thought about it. Um, so let me do that. So make sure that I can actually carry out, you know, the exact, the, the nature would, you know, give, uh, my spirit the, the chance to shine and show exactly how strong it can be. Right. But that was that, uh, longer playthrough than most of the time, uh, for the, for a solo game, but you see the level of complexity, not just with the character, but also with the adversary and the reasons why it does take a little bit longer than some of the other, um, playthroughs that we might have in this game but uh that's it so nice to get a victory under our belts i uh, hope everyone's having a great day uh thanks for joining me i will be back next week nine o'clock on sunday as normal till then happy gaming take care